me this morning the second Timothy chapter 3 verses 4 and 5 in the midsection of verse 4 it says lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God that's not really hard to understand is it we live in a pleasure seeking society Everything's about what makes me feel good. But the Bible says that Jesus told us that we'd have a cross to bear because He said, take up your cross. Amen. Not His cross, your cross. We all have a cross to bear. He also said that you must deny yourself. There's times in life that you think that Things are going to be pleasurable for you to do or to have, and it just doesn't turn out that way. Sometimes you've got to realize you've got to deny yourself. Everything that's shiny and glitters isn't gold. Amen. Amen. And sometimes you've got to realize that you can't have everything you want. I know that's not the teaching of a lot of pastors today, you know. It's like houses are appearing on empty lots and cars are appearing in garages and if you send me a thousand dollars you're going to be healed of cancer or whatever the situation. You can't buy nothing from God since God owns it all. The whole earth and the fullness thereof, God owns. And God owns heaven, amen. And he owns the streets of gold. He owns the gates of pearl. He owns everything. And we, amen, think we can buy off God. Come on. No way. Huh? Amen. Come on. We need to realize you can't buy nothing from the Lord. Amen. He paid the price. We owed a debt that we could not pay. It was impossible for us to pay that debt, but he paid it. <laughs> He paid a debt he did not owe. You owed it. Yes. So many times we forget to realize that Jesus, amen, went to an old rugged cross, gave his life as a sacrificial lamb, a lamb without a spot or blemish, a lamb, amen, that laid down his life, shed his blood for our redemption. He bought us back, amen, from the fallen Adam that fell in the Garden of Eve, amen. Jesus Christ come along and bought us back so that we could be children of Almighty God. And because He sits in heavenly places, we can sit there also, amen, if we are obedient to the Lord. Yes. Amen. Love is a pleasure. Why are people on drugs? Why are people having multiple affairs? Why are people doing this or that or something else? It's because it's pleasurable. Right. See, sin, the Bible says, yeah. is enjoyable for a season. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. But it's an awful short season. Come on. Right. For whatsoever a man sows, that shall he also reap. Right. Yeah. For the wages of sin <laughs> is death. There is a payday that will come. Yeah. Now, some people think because old Pastor Walls is from the older generation, he preaches the old-fashioned gospel because he doesn't like nobody. <laughs> no, I love you enough to tell you the truth. Amen. If you're looking for pleasure, you need to find it in Jesus. <laughs> for the Bible says on the right hand of the Father, amen, is pleasure and joy forevermore. Amen. Who's on the right hand of the Father? It's Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Amen. The Bible says, as Stephen said, I see Jesus standing at the right hand of the Father. Jesus said, I go and sit at the right hand of the Father. But he gets up, amen. And notices uh, when one of his children being mistreated here on earth, he loves you with an undying, unchanging love. Amen. Can somebody praise the Lord? Amen. Right after that, in the fifth verse, it says, "Having a form yeah. of godliness, but instead of denying themselves." Denying the power thereof. And from such 
turn away. Yeah. That word form means they have an appearance of godliness. Yeah. You know, somebody was just telling me today, somebody that God gave a miracle to standing right here that we prayed for. A tremendous miracle. God gave it to him, and today he's just ranting and raving on Facebook, and then all of a sudden puts something else about God or his church. A form of godliness. You want to appear to be someone you are not. Yes. You know what the Bible calls that? Hypocrite. Yeah. You know what hypocrite means? An actor. Yeah. Hollywood's full of them. I get amazed when the Hollywood actors tell us, amen, what we should do. And, and they're going to stop making movies if we don't stop, uh, amen, talking about things that we're passionate about. Uh, I could care less uh, what some actor who gets up in the morning who doesn't even know who they are because they're in different characters all the time is going to tell me, uh, amen, how to live for God. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. You can't stop this. I don't care how many hypocrites are out there, there's still some good Holy Ghost filled people, amen, that know God and know the power of God in their life that enables them to withstand the world and all the tactics the devil has and uses against us. Amen. Christian in name. Well, Jesus talked about that, didn't he? Yes. He said, Many shall come in my name. And see me. Uh -huh. What's his name? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Where do we get word, the word Christian? From Christ. You know what I mean? It's Christ like. Yeah. Amen. But if you're just Christ like in your appearance, well, then you're really not Christ like. Yeah. Yeah. See, Christ lives on the inside of us, not on the outside of us. Yeah. He's in our heart, amen. It ought to control our mind. That's why we ought to have the ability, and you have the ability. If we deny ourselves from the things of the world, we come out of the world and become separate because we are a people called by God. We are a royal priesthood. We're a holy family of God. Oh, I'm preaching better than you're shouting. Amen. And we can sustain, amen, from the things of the world, and we are children of God. Amen. <laughs> Appearance of God. Yeah, I'll be there when I want to. I don't like to go to church because there's too many hypocrites in the church. Amen. Well, there's one less. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. One less. Amen. My church is on the lake. <laughs> Only lake you're going to is the lake of fire. Right. Amen. Amen. We cannot put everything in front of God and expect God, amen, to honor our wishes, which are only wishes because they're certainly not prayer. Because the Bible says if it's prayer, you humble yourself before God. If it's prayer, you forsake your wicked ways. And then and only then does God hear, amen, and answer you from heaven to oh, I'm preaching better than shouting this morning. We like it until it hits us. Yeah. It's always for somebody else and not us. Because yeah. we have a form of godliness. Who are you, pastor, to tell me anything? Huh? I ain't nobody. Never had a claim to be anybody. Amen? Yeah. Nothing but somebody been redeemed. Same as you if you've accepted Jesus Christ. Amen. The Son hath made me free, so therefore I am free indeed. Yes. I don't get up in the morning, Brother Charles, and talk about how much I can sin or how much I think I can fail God that day. I get up in the morning thinking this is a glorious day that yes. God's made. How can I serve the same man yes. do something for God today that will make my day better than the one I had yesterday? God's gifts and callings without repentance. I started thinking the other day, I, I used to go places and God would speak to me about different people that I didn't know, never seen before, and God would give me something to give them. And I'd be obedient in that. And I hadn't been doing that for some time now. I, I, I guess I've got to that point, Sister Kim, that nobody listens to me anyway. Come on, come on, tell it. Amen. I mean, I've seen it over and over and over again, so I guess I've just got tired of trying which I shouldn't do. 
Remember my wife was at the health club, we're working out, and a young lady I don't know, couldn't tell you her name, couldn't tell you where she lived, couldn't tell you where she's from, couldn't tell you anything about her, but God spoke to me, I believe. I was getting ready to go, I sent my wife to the car, because I didn't know what I was going to do, I didn't want to inform her, I'm getting ready to talk to this young lady over there about the same age as my oldest daughter back there, she's almost as old as me now. <laughs> Gets that way sometimes. Anyway, I, 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 you know, I, I ain't been doing this for a while, Sister Ken. I'm cautious. So I, I you know, spun around and looked around and, you know, act like I was going to go to the bathroom and then turned around and <laughs> finally it hit me. I couldn't leave. So I might as well get it done. Amen? Amen. So I went ahead and went over and said, Ma'am, I don't know you. Never have known you. Amen. Couldn't tell you anything about you, but I can tell you this. She said, what? I said, I feel like God spoke to me that no weapon formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises up against you shall be put down. Amen. I said, I don't know if that means anything to you. She said, yes, sir. If you're a Christian, it does. Thank you, sir. So I don't know what she was going through, what problems she might have, but God wants to give people a word, but He can't use you, amen, unless you're denying yourself and walking, amen, in the Spirit and not fulfilling the lust and desires of the flesh. He's not looking for somebody who has a form of godliness, but He's looking for somebody who has the power of Almighty God that's invested in His Son, Jesus Christ, power and authority that's been given given to each and every one of us as children of God. Can somebody say amen? All scripture, the 16th verse says, is given by inspiration of God. And is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. What is it for? It's for instruction in righteousness. Yes. Well, Pastor, you're getting in my business. No, I'm not in your business. What you do is entirely up to you. If you're a homosexual, that's up to you. If you're an adulterer, that's up to you. I'm not worried about all the sins that may be in your life. What I'm concerned about is the sin that's going to carry you to hell itself. And that sin is the rejection of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. All those other things are just symptoms of the real sin. Amen. The nature of sin that has taken power and authority over you because you have given the devil a foothold a place in the Bible says neither give him place which actually means a toehold because once you give him a place that becomes the weakest link amen and you are just as strong as the weakest link in your perimeter amen you'll come in and he will beat you and beat you and beat you Oh, That's why we see him coming back every once in a while. Oh, I'm down again. Now, most are just down until they want to get up. Come on. And once God's mercy is shed upon them again, once they feel the grace of God and the power of God, and they realize, wow, it's, it's, it's done again. God's good. God is good. But God is a just God. Yeah. And He will, amen, make you accountable for everything yeah. you say, think, or do. Hallelujah. You better get it straight because Jesus is coming and is coming as soon. Yes. Yeah. Matthew 28, 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All powers, turn to your neighbor and say, All power, oh. is given unto me in heaven and earth. Not some power, but all power. Luke 24, 49. And behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endured with power from all high. Can somebody say amen? They were endured with power on high. Amen. Let's look at Acts 1, 8. But ye shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses, witnesses unto me both 
in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the uttermost parts of the earth. God said, I'm giving you a power. The power is for a reason. It's to make you a witness to all. But first, where do you start? Right there where you're at. Right there where you're at. You are a missionary to your children. Yes. Right. Hello, I tell people all the time. You are teaching those children whether you want to or not. Amen. Yes. The public system has them more time most of the time than you got because when they're at home, the internet, cell phone, a wide world web. Get it? Yeah. Cell net. Web. Does that ring any bells? Yes. Let me tell you something. Has anybody ever had a web in your house and tore it down and got out the next day and the web is there again? Yeah. See, tearing down the web doesn't help. You got to kill the spider. Amen. If you kill the spider, he can't build the web. Can somebody praise the Lord? And some of you got some spiders, amen, that you are giving heed to and not the word of the living God, which you need to know that God's given you power over all the power of the enemy. Amen. He's giving it to you. You got to use it though. You can't use it just as an appearance. Amen? They look like they got it, but they don't have it. Why do you think preachers have now gone to having somebody interview people that come to the meetings, hello, and get the cards, and then they know your description, and the preacher got a little bug in his ear, and they tell him, there's a girl, she's got like a maroon sweater on, black hair, Blue and black. She's got down, she's going through some mental depression. There's some things she's facing that is really giving her a lot of stress. And then he says, uh, her name is Kathy, by the way. Kathy Nardi. And he says, is there someone, uh, Kathy? Kathy Nardi? That's you, isn't it? Do I know you? Have I ever seen you before? You know? See, you can't have a counterfeit unless you've got something real. Amen? God told people their names and addresses. Go to a street called Straight. Yes. Amen? Talk to a man. They got an ice. Amen. Watch the scales fall off your eyes, Paul. See, God knows exactly what you need, who you are, and where you're at. There is the real gift of the word of knowledge. There is the real gift of wisdom. There is the real gifts of God. Amen. But some have counterfeited those gifts. We live in a day and an hour when there is a counterfeit church and a bargain counter religion. And I'm here to tell you, it's time that men and women of God expose it. Ephesians 1.19 says, What is the exceeding greatness of His power to us who who believe according to the working of His mighty power? Amen. We've got that mighty power. We've got that. We've been given that. Peter, a man that said he would die for the Lord, denied Him three times. But after he was filled with the Holy Ghost and power, he spoke to a large crowd. He said this in Acts 4.29. And grant unto thy servant with all boldness that I might speak thy word by stretching forth thine hand to heal as signs and wonders may be done by the name of the Holy Child. We know who name that is, the name of Jesus, amen. amen. The After they had prayed, the place was shaken, and a multitude of them were filled with the Holy Ghost. Can somebody say amen? amen. Acts 4, 
33 says, And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord, and great grace was upon them all, that I might know him, amen, is what the word of God says, that I might know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering. And one of the greatest witnesses who ever lived said that, the apostle Paul, I want to know him, amen. I'm the least among them. I'm the chiefest sinner, amen. But on the road to Damascus, amen, God came, struck me off that donkey, amen, blinded my natural eyes, opened my spiritual eyes. Oh, come on, somebody praise the Lord this morning. Hallelujah, ready to go up. I wanted to tell the world about Jesus. Do you remember when you first had your encounter with Jesus? Yeah. My Lord, you got up from the altar. You were changed, amen. You ran around and hugged everybody. You told everybody you met, man, I met a man. Yeah. Hallelujah. getting folks saved on the job. They were coming from different parts of the plant to get saved. That's God. Yes. You know why? Because instantly I went from a drug head cussing drunk to a man of God yes. that was laying in prayer before the Lord and reading that word on a constant basis and listening for God's voice. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. That wild faith that causes you to do things, amen, you don't normally right. do. Yes. But you believe that God is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that you're able to ask or think according to what? The power that works within you. There's a power of God. Amen. It fell upon them. 120 in that upper room. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost came. Hallelujah. Set upon them as tongues of fire. And they began to speak with new tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. We have folks sitting in the church today, Pentecost of churches uh, that are not filled with the Holy Ghost. Uh, therefore, they're not filled with the power of God. Uh, amen. You may have a form of it, uh, but it's not about having a form. Uh, it's about having the real thing, the power that's over all the power of the devil. Amen. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against that mighty church uh, of the living Savior, Jesus Christ. Some of you might think, well, Pastor, you don't sound very educated. Maybe I'm not. Paul was. And Paul said, just like I say, take all my credentials I got, which are many, and none of them mean nothing. Save Jesus Christ. Yes. That saved me. Yes. None of those degrees mean anything. Listen to that. 1 Corinthians 2 4. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the Spirit and power. Paul said, I might uh, seem to be uneducated. Uh, and when you finally meet me in person, you might think, uh, oh, who is this man here? Uh, he certainly doesn't look like he speaks, amen. He speaks with great authority and power, but look at him. Uh, he's just a natural man like anybody else. Uh, no, he's not. Uh, he's a man that has surrendered to God. Uh, he's a man, a man that's come out of the world. Uh, he's a man that's had a life-changing experience uh, with Jesus Christ. He's a man that knows the power and the demonstration of the power of a mighty God who can take handkerchiefs and aprons uh, and preach or uh, have them on his body. Uh, amen. And send them forth. And the Bible says uh, people were delivered and saved and healed. Paul had more power in his handkerchief than most of the church have in the whole congregation today. Amen. Right. Hmm? Peter a man that denied Jesus three times. And see, 
Peter thought it was going to be easy. Well, Lord, you know, you're the king. King of kings. I've seen your demonstration of power. Man, I've seen you cast out them devils. I've seen you raise the dead, heal the sick, open blinded eyes, unstopped deaf ears. I've seen you make the lame man walk and the dumb man talk. Oh. Well, man, everything mm -hmm. is going to be great until mm -hmm. they find out that Jesus has been taken captive and that he's going to die on an old ruddy cross. Then everything changed. The Bible says they scattered. Somebody told me one time, said, you don't have too many people with you. I said, well, let me tell you something. At the end of Jesus' life, he had nobody. Amen. All his disciples left. Peter started cussing. Hello. And Jesus on the cross said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Oh, there's times I get lonely. There's times I feel like nobody cares. There's times I feel like nobody listens. There's times when I think I'm just up here like a, a sounding timbrel. I'm just doing nothing. But then I'll get an email listening to you preach. It's blessing my heart. Amen. Somebody else will email me. We're listening in such and such a place. And I'm thinking, Lord, maybe they ain't listening everywhere, but they're listening somewhere. Yeah. That's right. So no matter how little that you think you're doing, at least do something even if it's little. Yeah. If you can't get everybody saved, get somebody saved. Yes. Began at Jerusalem, then branched out to Judea, amen, as in the uttermost parts of the earth. Bring the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. We need to realize that we're in this for the long haul. Yes. Well, Pastor, I started off good, yeah? You did run well. But who hindered you? Come on. This persuasion cometh not from the one who called you. Amen. 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 Who hath bewitched you? Well, we've had people in this congregation tell me I just went and seen the palm reader. Oh, I love Jesus. No, you don't. <laughs> You wouldn't be doing that thing. You wouldn't be opening up yourself to demonic powers and then wondering why your life is in a mess. Yes. Watch out, Pastor. You might get another one. Well. Amen. Well, pretty soon, we ain't going to hit too many if we continue going this way. <laughs> and normally, when you throw a rock in a pack of dogs, the first one that barks is the one you hit. Right. We got some barking dogs. Amen? But let me assure you that I tell you this because I love you. I love you enough to tell you the truth. I love you enough. I know sometimes I'll make you so mad you want to hit me. Don't do it, though. I'm old, but I can still pull that trigger. Don't do it. Amen? I wouldn't need to, old sister Kim. You might have been here when this happened. Man was on that back seat back there. Face became distorted, snorting like a pig. Come running up doing one of these. Came to hit me, fell right there. Flat his back. That was my brother. He got up and said, all I could see was killing you. I wanted to kill you. It wasn't him that wanted to kill me. It was the demon in him that wanted to kill me. Let me tell you, it's not you that's hating me. It's the demon you're listening to that can't stand me. He knows who I am. He knows I'm preaching the truth. He knows I'm not afraid of him. He knows that I'm in combat with him, amen, and against him, and he can't stand it. Yeah. 
couple times casting out demons and they say, I know who you are. Oh yeah, they know you. If you are a threat to their kingdom, they know you. You know, demons, they don't like to leave where they're at. They can stay right where they're at. That's why families used to have the same conditions over and over again. Some preachers call it a generational curse. It's the demons. What did they tell Jesus? Don't send us out of our country. We like it right here. We made a place right here. You'll find that in the Word of God. Amen? Yeah. See, if you've allowed and give place to the devil, they like to stay right there. Somebody said, you better tell us a little bit more about that. Let me tell you, after he's cast out of somebody, he goes and he walks through dry, barren places, yeah. seeking rest, and findeth none. And he comes back to that same temple that has been swept and garnished, but it has a sign on it for rent. And he comes back in and takes seven more vile and filthier than he is and inhabits that same place that he left. And the last state of that person is worse than the first. Amen. You can't play with the devil because he ain't playing. Right. See, when I preach like this, some of you actually feel that. that. That gnawing, you know, inside you. Man, you want to get up and get out, you know. Used to, when, when we had mothers here with young babies, they actually pinched the baby. So the baby would cry so they could run out. Amen. All the heat was hot. Amen. See, used to, I wish you could go back and listen to some of our radio programs. Used to, people start crying and screaming out in the service. They couldn't even make it to the altar. Amen. They fall under the power of God because God's power was so in this place. The anointing was so heavy that at times people could feel the brushing of angel wings. They could see glory clouds come in this place. Some of you say, what happened? We replaced it, amen, with fog machines. We replaced it with lights and glitter and glamour because we have a form of godliness but deny the power thereof. We don't need gadgets and gimmicks. We need the Holy Ghost and power back in this place. Now I got a lot more to preach. I'm going to let you go because I've done one over. Amen. I don't want your pot roast burning. Hallelujah. Come on. Look around today. See how many now, some have legitimate reasons. See, when we talk this way, we're not talking about you. They have a legitimate reason. That's fine. We understand that. We're human. We know there's times when you just can't make it. We also know there's times when you made excuses. Yeah. Amen? Amen? We had a Sunday school teacher, I think, one time. He, he was a Sunday school superintendent, I believe. And he missed Sunday school. And uh, asked him where he was at. He said, well, I said, I was over at your dad's place at the lake fishing. I said, you sorry individual. <laughs> you had a job to do. <laughs> My dad told me, he told me one time, he left his poles, left his gears, left everything. My told, dad told me, you don't get out, I'll kill you right here where you stand. <laughs> Amen. Don't mess with the devil. Amen. Amen. You don't play. My dad at that time was pretty much a devil. Amen. And he didn't play. Amen. Amen. But see, you can always make those excuses. You can always come up with something. Amen. But you need to come up with this. He gave us power. Not a form, but power. Amen. To demonstrate in the words we speak because of the words of God that are spirit and life. Amen? To the hearers and the doers that believe in what's being said. Would you stand to your feet this morning? Pastor, I just got a prayer request from Rita. Her husband is not doing very well today. Rita? Yeah, I'm wondering where Sister Rita was at. Huh? 